just a quick video of the outside of the cemetery. It wasn't too hard to get here. I had to take the metro and then I had to take the tram. It actually took me right by Cité Universitaire, which is where I stayed last year. Um, so it's a very familiar area to me. Though I don't think I ever walked this far down or took the tram this far down either. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, from the outside, we could see a really nice cemetery gate. You can see some of the structures inside stick up above the gate, so I'm expecting this to be cool. I wonder if this was like an alternate entrance at one time. Hard to say. Oh, and I apologize. Um, I think I got some kind of sinus thing happening right now. Um, so if you hear me snorting and snotting, <laughs> that's probably why. Uh, this cemetery was really nice because there's actually a street sign marking the way as soon as I got off of the tram. Um, so that was great because I rely so much on GPS, but often GPS messes up here. Um, I don't know if it's because of the buildings or the cloud cover because we have had a lot of rain lately. Um, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, it's helpful to have street signs that actually direct you. It's something we don't actually see a lot of in the United States with a lot of our lesser well-known or lesser known cemeteries. Um, there's often no signage <laughs> marking the way there. And a lot of times, even the people in the communities don't know the cemeteries exist, especially for um, the black cemeteries. All right, I am here. This is the entrance. And I'm going to see if I can cross the street. So I'll catch up with you in a second. Okay, testing, testing. One, two, three. Just making sure this mic works. All right, so I got safely across the street. <laughs> and I'm here at the entrance to the cemetery. Yay. Um, being a little careful because uh, sometimes people here like park their work vehicles along the road um, and they just sort of sit in them. I don't know if they're taking lunch breaks or what, but as I was walking down, there was a guy that um, gave me the creeps, kind of was rolling his window down and looking like he's expecting me to come over to his vehicle. So I don't know what that was about. could just be a misunderstanding, but now I'm kind of like cautious because I'm going into a cemetery and he can see that I'm going into a cemetery and there's not a lot of people that frequent the cemetery sometimes um, but it's all on camera so <laughs> we'll see what happens all right so let's turn this around this is our entrance sign Vie de Gentilly or Gentil I'm not sure how you say that actually you can see they have some odd hours <laughs> I guess like winter and summer kind of hours um, it's like they do not allow dogs or bicycles which is a little different from some cemeteries in the United States all right and we are going in immediately we're met with a giant bar it's not very beautiful to first enter in and see that, but I guess it serves the purpose. Um, there's a keypad here. Probably allows like the work vehicles to go through. Um, got a dumpster right at the front, a sign for toilets, which is, you know, my favorite thing in the cemeteries. <laughs> and then uh, we just have some pathways. <clears throat> I don't have any history about this cemetery um, but we'll see there's some signs up here let me see what these say so they don't use pesticides they have diverse flowers um, there's a source of food for like the bees and other insects that pollinate um, looks like they promote biodiversity here. Uh, so this might be similar to the Mont Rouge Cemetery that we visited a couple of days ago. Mm 
I'm just kind of reading, make sure I don't do anything wrong, follow the rules while I'm here. Oh, looks like it might still be an active cemetery. There's a map up here. And it tells you who's buried where. Um, none of these names really look familiar to me. Sometimes I know names, but sometimes I don't. It depends. If it's somebody who wrote a book or who wrote some music, I'm usually familiar with them because those are my things. <laughs> I've heard about these tiger mosquitoes. Apparently they're becoming bad here. Oh, this talks about the automatic barrier. Okay, so some interesting things to kind of read and know about. All right, so I saw a man walking around the cemetery. I don't know if he works here or what, but um, we'll just keep an eye out. You can see in the background, those are stadium lights back there. There's a big giant stadium that I passed on the way here. It's the stop before this one on the tram. And we are just going to walk as usual. <laughs> it is a windy day, so I do apologize in advance for the wind. As you know, I cannot control it. It is what it is, as we like to say. I've seen this before in the last cemetery. I was in the, uh, like, circular vase that sits on top of the cross. It's interesting. I mean, as soon as you walk in, you have those like kind of wild grow areas that I mentioned in previous videos. It's very beautiful. And then it sort of just peters out over here. This is nice, like a little covered seating area. So if it does start to rain, I know where I can come to. I have a small umbrella today, so <laughs> I won't have to leave immediately. It's supposed to rain like every day this week, which is really messing up my cemetery plans. So, oh no, guys, look at this. So, you see the issue with the big giant tree root? It is destroying, destroying this whole burial plot. Oh my goodness. This is why no trees in the cemetery. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what this metal thing is about. I don't know if it's just, you know, for the workers, they just left something sitting there or what? Honestly, I don't even know where to go in this cemetery. It's not huge, um, but there's just sort of pads everywhere. I see people over there and I want to try and talk louder so y'all can hear. So I'm going to go this way. We'll go away from people. Some beautiful flowers. I do not know what kind of flowers these are. Pink and white. I see a couple little bugs flying around them, which is the goal. Um, there's some major stuff happening here to the walkway. There's no way I'd be able to walk on that. I've got a bum knee. I don't know what happened, but yesterday I injured my knee when I stepped off of the metro. And I don't know, I have not been able to walk well since then. And walking on this kind of uneven, crumbly stuff is not going to happen today. So there may be some areas I don't get to go. Wow, look at that. That's a new. That's the brightest thing out here. Oh, I see. So they just died in 2023. So that's uh, this year. That explains it. It says 1917, 1996, 2015, and 2023. Hmm. I'm seeing trash cans everywhere, which is nice. Uh, maybe there's a pet. Just funny because they said no dogs, but that clearly looks like a dog house. Um, there's food bowls 
I guess I found the bathroom. <laughs> That's good to know. All right, and if we look this way, you can see all of the roads are completely paved. Really nice. They even have these, um, I don't know if the, they're called, but these parts down the middle, kind of like a gutter or something. <laughs> That's not the correct term. Um, but basically the roads slant towards the center and then this little thing directs the water down towards like a common draining area to stop the area from flooding. Um, that's something I've seen a lot of in Paris, even on the cobblestone roads. A lot of times they slant inwards or outwards to direct the water. It's really nice in this cemetery to see all of the um, dirt is basically covered up. That's excellent because if there is an issue with rain or flooding, you don't have to worry about like lots of mud and everything. Um, people can visit any time of year if the ground is paved and is clear for walking. I've seen some interesting stuff over there, but we'll circle around to it. Just taking a look at the wall. This is not as tall as some of the cemetery walls I've seen before. It's just as loud out here though. <laughs> okay, these look old. And zoom in a little or zoom out. That looks fairly old. And this one over here. This guy is just coming apart. Looks like it's just natural, like subsi subsidence from the ground or whatever. So I don't see anything else over here that would be causing that issue. The pathway is kind of gone. You can't really see it through the bushes, but I can see it. There was like a cement pathway and then it just sort of broke apart which I see commonly at like abandoned and neglected cemeteries, but this cemetery does not appear to be abandoned or neglected. And I've got the mic on today. The mic is pretty close to my voice box here. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me okay, especially over the wind and over the traffic. Um, I do apologize if you hear my stomach rumbling. I have, I came here straight from class, so I have not had breakfast or lunch this morning. It's interesting. It's like a little rose encased in some kind of glass. The grass here is pretty tall. Uh, this goes up to like thigh level on me. And I am five foot six. <laughs> so this is some pretty tall uh, grass. I mean, it's the size of a toddler. I don't know what they use for like landscaping. I didn't see any signs up front about that. There's something odd happening right there. And I'm not really coming here looking for things that are like falling apart, um, but I do want to like really hone in on those things because I'm trying to understand, um, I guess like the natural processes of um, like weathering and things like that that happen in the cemetery that impact the stones and the burials um, versus that doesn't even sound right either, like the natural processes, because it's natural no matter what. Um, but I guess the speed of those natural processes when you have someone caring for the space versus when you don't. I'm trying to see at what point um, the Parisians intervene with the damage to the headstones and things, at what point they rope them off. When are they making repairs? What do those repairs look like? Are they similar to our repairs? Like, is there a different timeline? 
Um, and a lot of that's hard to know, right? Just walking through. I don't have an expert cemeterian <laughs> following me around and offering advice or anything like that. This is some kind of rodent trap. It's odd to see outside. Maybe they have a problem with rats or mice. That's kind of a small entry, so I don't think it's like gophers or anything. I don't even know if they have gophers out here. <laughs> It's very, very city here. Oh my, oh my, the ground is really overgrown. The burials and the monument placement here is not so close together as we've seen in other cemeteries, um, which is why we have so much green space sticking out here and there. Even this is not out of control because technically right now we're in the growing season and this area has had a lot of rain over the past week. Um, last year when I was here, it never rained. It didn't rain the whole time we were here. But this time, <laughs> I actually had to go out and buy an umbrella, which I was trying not to do. Um, but I had no choice. It's just so much rain. So I can imagine if it's raining every single day. And I don't know if my camera oops, can show it but we've got rain clouds up there right now threatening us and people are walking around with their umbrellas just in case. So yeah, the rain has been pretty ferocious these past two weeks. <laughs> ah, something smells good. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's this tree. Lots and lots of dead leaves from this tree that's above me here. They actually don't look like the same leaves from this tree now that I'm looking at them. So I wonder where they come from. This is Division 43. And I haven't shown you, but they have the um, little road signs, just like all of the cemeteries we've been to. Paris is really good about that. I greatly appreciate it. It's something we definitely need to start doing more of in America, especially in our minority cemeteries. There are so many famous people who had major impacts in the United States as a whole buried in minority cemeteries, and people don't even know about it. A lot of times, even if they know where the cemetery is, they don't know how to get to the person's burial spot. So having those maps up front, like we see here, having the pathways and the roads clearly marked, having the sections in the cemetery labeled, all of those things will help direct you to the um, more well-known burials. Wow, what is this? Look at that. How unique is that? I've never seen anything like that. I'm just going to pull my phone out and take a picture and then I'm going to walk around it because I don't see anywhere um, where there's like a name of a person. Let's see. I don't even know what material this is. Is it stone? Is it metal? I don't know. I mean, the cross is clearly wood. <laughs> Ugh, I don't even want to walk through this stuff. It's so tall. I'm not dressed for walking through foolishness. It could be that down in this part that's kind of filled with water and debris, there could actually be some kind of monument information there. I'm going to go ahead and walk around even though I don't want to. Oof. Uh, okay, no, there's no name back here either. Okay. All right, then. There's literally like a wet carpet right here, though. <laughs> That's kind of odd. All right, I'm going to get out of this area. You can kind of see here what I'm walking through tall 
kind of dead grass, but everything is also still sort of wet. At least it's not muddy, but it's definitely wet. Look at this. This is unusual. It's a, uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly. It's a cross that's coming out of the ground at an angle. That is pretty cool. Uh, looks like there was a nameplate there. But if there was anything carved on it, I cannot tell. I don't see any indications of that. But why else would they put the the nameplate like that. Huh. That's quite unique. I've seen these slanted crosses on some other burials. Um, usually like these guys. And there'll be a slanted cross coming out of them. Um, I haven't seen one like coming out of the ground like this. It's kind of cool. Alright. Moving on. I'm just walking around the outskirts of the cemetery. I have not even gone into like the, the central parts yet. Oh, look at this. What kind of stone is this? It's pink. It's rough. Let me step up here. Um, it doesn't have any kind of finish on it. Anybody know? That's not like pink granite, is it? I've been hesitant to like touch stones to see how they feel and stuff because I don't know. It just, I don't know these people. I don't have like a, a deep and abiding connection to them. Um, I don't know why. It's, it's normally I'm not like that, but for some reason here I have been. Something going on there. It was repaired. And then there's like a, a number or something in the ground back here. Let me see, it says, you can't see it on the camera. It's like 43.01.45. I don't know what that number's for. It's clearly purposeful. I just don't know why it's there. This is also interesting. A lot of times these. Um, stones that are used they remind me of countertops like something you would see in somebody's kitchen all right let's just keep on keeping on wow look at that beautiful bird y'all see that oh my He's chunky. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that kind of bird. He's blue, white, and black. That's new. All right, I'm starting to feel raindrops, so it may rain here in a minute. If it does, I'm just gonna pull my umbrella out and keep going, because I got plans today. I got plans this week, and the cemeteries don't stay open long enough to suit some of my free time which is actually late in the evening <laughs> so I've got to get them while I can get them this is my last week I think I visited maybe five or six cemeteries it's not the 14 that they're supposed to have here but I've done quite a lot I've definitely done enough to get an idea of the common types of monuments and headstones seen in the cemeteries um, to get an idea for the types of damage that we see here um, and some of the things they do to like block off areas or keep areas safe. Um, I've seen some of the way they incorporate cemeteries into their plans for nature, for green space, for uh, just being responsible, like eco-responsible. And uh, I've also seen how they sign their cemeteries. You know, signage is extremely important. Um, signage and security. 
kind of look out. All right, we are actually walking uphill. Maybe you can tell in the camera, our road is really slanting. <laughs> oh, look, we have an ivy on the wall. I always think that's so, so beautiful. Although the ivy here is growing over top of this stone. The stone has actually been pulled backwards. It's cracked completely down the middle. Just trying to see. Looks like there was some kind of plates held onto the stone with metal. I don't know if you can see that little green circle up there right next to the ivy. That is a, sorry about that, I tripped. <laughs> that is a little piece of like copper or iron or something that's holding that plate there. And then there's one here under the ivy where the plate has broken away. But that plate, both of those plates probably had people's information on it, which is lost now. But because the cemetery keeps records, at least they know who's here. I'm seeing a lot of bone pieces um, like that right there. That's a piece of bone. And I've seen a couple others. I'm pretty sure they're just animal bones, but <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of them. not sure what happened here the whole top part has been removed maybe for repairs or maybe they're getting ready to bury some other family members here I'm not sure uh, but it's had some impact on the one right beside it we can clearly see straight down under there maybe not the camera but I can see straight down uh, looking at one back here look at that immense immense damage so much interesting stuff. I was just going to walk back, but I think I'm going to step through here. Ow, my knee is killing me. Hopefully this is okay. I haven't seen any signs about like where to walk. Um, and there's no real pathway here. It's just sort of open. Um, I don't see any people. So I'm going to say it's okay. <laughs> Zoom out here. So this is really damaged to the point you can even see like the the rebar here. Um, we can see completely inside and there's not going to be anything to see. Uh, sometimes in situations like this you can actually see remains which we're not looking for. Um, if there were remains I would not show them at all to you. Um, but sometimes in situations like this this top part is basically covering up the burial. Other times there's a like a deeper vault underneath that's covered. Um, but you can see here, it looks like someone's thrown dirt down in there, probably to cover up anything that was there. And then these little green guys started growing. Um, this is this is really exactly what I see in minority cemeteries, especially in black cemeteries. Um, you see these vaults that are completely open and 90% of the time you actually can see remains, um, which for me is a huge problem that needs to be fixed. Um, at least here, if someone is aware of the situation, uh, they covered up anything that might be visible or maybe even removed it for all I know. Uh, this also caught my attention. Um, I mean, plywood and an old door, I guess, can be just as effective. At least people know not to walk there, right? I have to say, this, this is uh, epic, epic disrepair right here. I'm not sure what's going on in this one section. Uh, these don't seem to be old. I see 1960, 1970. Which is interesting because one of the cemeteries I worked in in Virginia, um, a lot of the burials that had the most damage were 1970s. So I wonder if something 
went on with like our building materials <laughs> at that time. Um, I don't know, just a question that I have. And would that be like a universal thing that would happen in, you know, multiple countries? I don't know. Uh, you can see the tilting of this one on the right. I don't know what's going on there. I'm not seeing anything major that would cause that. So I'm guessing the ground is just settling and that's what happened. I don't know. Maybe the, the vault or something underneath gave way. Uh, even the sidewalk itself is, is tilted down. Whenever I see that, you know, the ground doing that, I always think of like the end scene. I think it's like the Amityville horror when there's like this giant storm and the house and everything is sinking down into the ground and the people are like <laughs> trying to get out. And yeah, I don't know why my brain goes there, um, but it does. <laughs> All right, I'm going to walk this way. It looks like some newer burials over here. This is a very nice pathway. I can't tell, that's the only thing, I can't tell what's going on here because we have this fencing marking off that path on both sides with the trash can on both sides. There's cones down there. Maybe that's a section where they're doing work. Maybe that's a section where they're going to have a burial soon. Um, I don't know, but I definitely feel like I can't go that way, so I'm not going to go that way. Um, that's an interesting way to mark it off. I would think in an area like this where everything is just, you know, covered with signage that they would just put a sign like, hey, no entry, we're doing something, <laughs> you know? Because uh, you'd really only need a couple of those signs and then you just reuse them. Hey, look. Oh, let's see if I can reach them. Another little snail buddy. These guys are really popular in these cemeteries. Um, this one has a sign on it. I don't know what that means. I'm going to pull my phone out and try not to step on the snail this time. Um, let me see if I can translate this, see what it means. Ugh, the rain is trying to get me again. Uh, translate. Okay, that was not helpful at all. <laughs> it basically put the same words um, in a different order, so that doesn't help me. Alrighty, moving on. This is the location I was trying to go to. And I guess it's okay to walk here. It just looks like open ground. Doesn't look like there are any burials here. Uh, these, I mean, they stand out. They're so bright. Um, you can tell the shapes are different. So we have cultural differences here because of the shapes. The brightness of these, very, very white, even the stones like the little rocks that are put inside are white. It's a stark contrast from the surrounding burials. Um, I think on this one, I see some Arabic at the bottom. So we probably have um, maybe Muslim burials. That would make sense with the shape of the stones. Look, they sort of resemble shapes that I associate with um, the Middle East. Very interesting how these are so different from the ones around them. All right, and there's a brand new burial here. That one, the ground hasn't even settled yet, it's still mounded up. And we'll leave them in peace. Move on. And this uh, grass here is getting really tall. I'm talking like shoulder height on me. 
so I may not <laughs> walk through that pathway. Um, I do see a grand, grand uh, monument back here that I want to get to, so we'll start heading that way if I can find my way out. I didn't actually walk in on a path. There's so many areas where the ground is unstable here that I'm actually being quite careful where I walk. Uh, it's reminiscent of when I worked in, you know, some really bad cemeteries, bad in regards to the amount of care they were receiving. And, um, ow, something attacked my leg. And uh, I always had to be careful in those cemeteries because I'm a larger person. A lot of times you see people doing like archaeology work and preservation work. A lot of times they're really skinny people. <laughs> I don't fit that mold. I never have. Um, always been fairly large. It's just how it is. Um, but it doesn't stop me from doing the work. It may stop me from getting hired because people have biases and... Uh, they have opinions about who can and cannot do work. <laughs> but it just means for me, I have to be aware, very aware of the ground I'm walking on and very aware of potential danger to myself and others. But I think you have to be like that no matter your size. Okay, little bees, y'all let me come through here, be nice. Walking through a little dandelion patch. Wanted to check out this guy. This poor cross has met his demise. I always wonder, so <laughs> you've got this pin that clearly was holding up the cross and we can look down here in like the bottom. That's where the pin would have gone. Um, and we've got some major issues happening. If I can get my camera to like work with me here. Major issues happening there. Like inside of this cross area. That's as far as I can zoom in and go a little closer. So that's probably what made it fall. But I always wonder, like if it was standing upright, you know, right here. If it fell backwards, it would have landed like over there on the burial behind it. And if it fell forward, wouldn't it topple like head first? Wouldn't the top of the cross be here and the bottom be there? How does it fall like this? <laughs> How does it levitate itself and land to, you know, fall like this? Um, I've seen this happen a lot in cemeteries and the way things fall sometimes like defies logic in my mind. Uh, I don't know. The only thing I could guess is maybe in this case, somebody saw that it was a danger and they came in and took it down and gently laid it down here. Uh, that makes more sense to me than that thing just fell because <laughs> I don't think it would fall like that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've often seen things sort of fall down and I, I question how they got that way. So a lot of times it looks like they levitated down or something. Okay, I've got to move this mic away. It's like rubbing against my neck. Hopefully you can still hear me okay. This is a very interesting material here. Look at the colors like pink gray some white even some kind of bluish colors in there that is beautiful that's quite beautiful and I think I'm gonna grab a picture of this with my other camera if I can get over here to stand up here because the ground is not stable. It's quite beautiful, I have to say. It's amazing the different kinds of granite that come out of here. 
Like these cemeteries have had some beautiful, beautiful stones. And look, here's another one of those numbers. Uh, 19.01.10. I don't know if those are like plot markers or maybe that's how they keep track of who's buried where. Oh no, look at this guy. How many times have we seen this in the cemeteries? I mean, this is, gosh, I feel like if the wind blew too hard, it would just crumble into a million pieces. And like, it looks like people have tried to repair it over time. I'm seeing a lot of biological stuff happening from inside and out. Look at all the cracks in the sky. I mean, that's pretty epic. I, I want to know what causes that. Like what causes such catastrophic failure? We have the same thing starting to happen here. I mean, I am noticing, I think I'm noticing that these do not have the water runoff things. Like a lot of the burials, especially the newer ones, have these little water spouts that I showed you on previous videos. And most of these that I'm looking at do not have them. So maybe that's something that's going on. But this one is, you know, that goes straight into the inside. That's not good. It's very concerning. And I'm seeing it pretty much across the board in this section. Um, nearly every single one of these guys has something somewhere that's starting to break down. And I am not seeing any of those drainage spouts. So maybe this has something to do with water, um, but there's got to be something else going on too. So you people out there who are experts, let me know what is happening. What is happening to these things? Um, yeah. Okay, this is what I wanted to see. Look at that. Grand, grand structure. Oh my. Grab a couple of pictures of my photos. I'm on the camera. I have lost my wide lens for this <laughs> little camera. I think it fell into my bag. But hopefully I can find it again so I can get more of these structures into the pictures. That looks like a symbol for masons like we might see in the United States. Let's see, you can see the beautiful art at the top. It's like a golden sun shining down on some kind of bird. I love, love, love the tile work that is incorporated into the headstones and the monuments out here. Let's see, looks like that guy was an architect. There's a couple architects actually on this list. Simon Remoisonnet, architect, died 1902, and his wife, who died 1917. You have one, two, three, four, five burials, maybe? Six? And then there's some words in the bottom here. Uh, memory of Rene. Remosone. It's hard to read this. And Marie Cornier, maybe his spouse. That's the best I can make out with the French. <laughs> I cannot really see the years on there. But this is so, so cool. 
beautiful, actually, quite beautiful. All right, let's continue on down this pathway. Looks like the rain clouds passed over. I just had a couple sprinkles, didn't even have to pull out my umbrella. That's great. Give you a view of the cemetery here. I love this camera as opposed to my phone for doing these sort of 360 pan kind of images because this camera is uh, naturally just going to move slower than my phone because it's smart and it knows what I want it to do. <laughs> Whereas with my phone, I'm pretty sure y'all get motion sick and whiplash and all that stuff. So <laughs> that's why I like to use this. I think it's just gentler for people. Um, you can see from this angle, I don't know if you can see it in the camera very well, but the ground is slowly descending down. These are like steps. And they go all the way down. I can clearly see the levels from here. Uh, may not be quite visible with the camera, but you have a level there, and then one there, and one up there. And they just sort of step down. In a way, I can't tell when I'm walking up the path because the path just slants upwards. Um, but here, there's actual visible steps. So you can see some of the symbolism here. We've got the wreath, which I've mentioned before, is a symbol used only in French cemeteries for death. It's like a bow tied around the cross. Flowers, maybe those are lilies, some religious significance. significance. Um, we've got the wreaths placed here. Big old giant tree. I've been looking at these trees as I go and I have not noticed any kind of bug hotels <laughs> like we've seen in some of the other cemeteries. Um, so while the cemetery claims to um, be a home to pollinators, um, I don't know that they've made a space for the pollinators to live. They can come here and visit the flowers, but I don't see a place for them to like actually hang out. In fact, I haven't seen many bees here at all as compared to other cemeteries. I'm just looking for root damage. I mean, we have here, the sidewalk is messed up. That's clearly from the tree roots. The roots have raised this ground up entirely. And then behind, we have displacement of the little retaining wall on this step. These tree roots have probably traveled down, you know, to the next step. Ugh, the wind is attacking me. I can get a view this way. We haven't looked at this side. You can still see the stadium lights in the background. We're getting closer to the stadium. Now, when I first came into the cemetery, I saw, you know, three or four people walking around. And since then, I have not seen anyone. It has been quiet um, other than traffic noise and the noise of someone working on the outside of the cemetery gates. Look at this. I've seen this a lot. This sort of cast iron metal work. It's so simplistic in its structure and these metal things actually go down into the stone beneath um, looks like there's hooks for hanging flowers that looks like on this side you could hang one two three four five six seven 
eight flowers from bottom to top on this side. So this whole thing would be 16, uh, 17, because there's one right at the top where that spire is. So I imagine with all the flowers hanging on it, it probably looks amazing. But just like this, empty with nothing, it almost looks like an eyesore or like scaffolding or something incomplete, you know. I would love to see this with all the flowers and the way that it's intended to be. I see that it's got some damage here. Um, right here. And so I wonder even structurally how sound it is. Can it even hold the weight of, you know, 16 hanging plants? That's probably why there's nothing there, maybe. Let's see a grand structure over there we'll go check out. We've got our trash receptacles and water, which I always love to see in a cemetery, both of those things. I don't know what this is. What does it say? Oh, maybe it's like compost. This is like vegeto. Maybe it's going to be used for planting. Looks like there's onions or something. I have noticed, sorry for the wind again, <laughs> but I have noticed in several cemeteries at the base of these planters, there have actually been onions and garlic planted in them. Um, I don't know what that's about. I mean, my, my first thought is like, oh, vampires, you know, like if we plant garlic, <laughs> it'll keep the vampires away. Um, but in fact, that's probably silly. That's probably not what it is, but I don't know why they do that. I have to do some research on the significance of onions and garlic <laughs> in French cemeteries. So I was looking at this grand structure, reaching to the skies. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I'm noticing here this name. Now, I have seen this name on stones across multiple cemeteries now. So that has got to be the mark of the stonemason or whoever carves these things. It has to be. Is this person who's buried here, that's not their name. You could even carve something on the side if you wanted to. It's just beautiful. I tell you, some of these people who work in cemeteries creating the statues and the monuments and the uh, English is leaving me. <laughs> the little mausoleums and things, um, all the stuff that they create. It's really artistic, on par with some great architects, I think, um, and some great artists. Just amazing, amazing work. I definitely feel like our cemeteries, not just French cemeteries, but like our American cemeteries as well, um, can be used as museums of various forms of art just because of um, how amazing some of the the work is that's done I'm noticing this little guy is having some issues and this sort of shape is the same that we've seen in many cemeteries usually with 
much older burials and it looks like that it says 1880 I cannot see 1880 it's kind of broken and worn away it could be a six or a four regardless it's old <laughs> so they usually use the same kind of stone I'm not sure is that sandstone or what that is um, But it also doesn't seem to last very long so well i mean maybe it does i guess if it's 1880s you know that's several hundred years ago so i guess length of time are um, kind of arbitrary <laughs> somebody might think it's a long time and somebody might not think it's lasted a long time another grand cross that has not stood the test of time the culprit being those little pins right there those guys are a problem every single time whenever you see <laughs> the top of a stone that's broken off like that it's always 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 the metal look you can even see in here that's where the metal pin went in, right there, that's one side of it. The side of the stone is broken off on both sides. Um, that is what happens. Again, here, see that? Those metal pins, they'll get you every time. <laughs> and a, a key way to know that this is happening, you can see the uh, the cracks and things like right there where the pins the base of the pins are you can see that long before the stone is in major danger of toppling and you have plenty of notice to fix it if you're aware of what's going on it's a beautiful pathway cobblestones down the side pebbles down the center pathway slants off to the side so sort of a rounded path so water runs off to the left and the right got some nice tree cover even though it is in a cemetery <laughs> I'm not seeing a ton of damage to the burials around these trees just at first glance um, so for now, it's okay. I mean, you can't deny that trees in cemeteries are beautiful. And shade in cemeteries is necessary. We definitely need the shade. But um, I think there can be alternative ways of getting your greenery and alternative ways of getting shade. Oh, there's a little praying girl inside. I don't know if you can see her. Yeah, there she is. And behind her is actually um, two tablets with information on them. Here comes the rain. I mean the rain. The uh, wind again. Those tablets look really old, too. I can't see the dates. The 28th. Uh, yeah, I cannot see the dates at all. That actually might be one tablet that's broken in half. And sometimes those tablets can get pretty tall. Oh, and now the sun comes out. It's not one thing, it's another. <laughs> I guess I could use my umbrella to protect my devices from the sun just to give us a little shade. We'll see. Hopefully I don't overheat today like I did last time. Okay, here we go again. This guy is completely open inside. 
so is the one next to it. I don't know what this is about. And so I wonder, is this done purposefully? Is this how they access the inside to add more burials, you know? You can just pull a part away and then slide it back after you're done. Um, it doesn't seem like they, they would do that. The ground doesn't seem, <laughs> like the opening doesn't seem wide enough to like slide anything in. Um, so I don't think it's done purposefully, but I can't say for sure. I'm telling you, this thing, it just continually goes uphill. I'm seeing some very cool stuff on that side of the cemetery, so I can't wait to get over there and like walk around. But I want to continue in like our current trajectory. My nose is starting to run. I ran out of allergy pills like last week. So I'm all sniffly. <laughs> Plus my classmate has been sitting beside me. I think he has a cold. He's been like coughing and sneezing. And he's like, don't worry, it's just the air conditioner. I'm like, there is no air conditioner. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's so hot. There is that sign again that I tried to translate I think it means like they're like being conserved like they're under conservation or something so it says a la conservateur on it there's another one it's just a white sign but it's got the same words so maybe that's how you know these ones are being worked on I mean the ground is really bad in this section I'm not even going to walk over there. That's how bad it is. <laughs> all the headstones and monuments and things are all topsy-turvy. Okay, this cemetery wins the award for most disrepair that I've seen while I've been here. Uh, not a good award to win, y'all. That's beautiful see them kind of on an angle so everything's gonna look slanted I apologize it's like the covered urn on top and the wreath it's beautiful Let's see from the side here we've got the names of people Four people, oldest burial being 1932. It's quite beautiful. All right, let's continue on up. Oh, look at that. Damage to that. Whew. I just feel like everywhere I look, it doesn't matter left or right, everywhere I look, something is in disrepair. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean these things aren't being worked on. Clearly, someone is trying to fix them. But this reminds me of a situation I was in where the work is greater than the amount of funding and the number of people you have to <laughs> complete it. Um, and it's sort of like fighting a uh, losing battle because what you're doing maybe fixing one two three stones but while you're fixing those you know 50 more are falling apart and what can you do what can you do sometimes all you can do is make sure that they have been documented that someone knows there's a problem <laughs> and that the area is safe for people to come and check it out to be around it and when it's not safe that you mark it off so that people can't access it and you just move on with life I mean it's sad to say but a lot of times it's just a tremendous amount of work that has to be done especially when you come into a cemetery that's already faced 
50, 60, 70 years of disrepair. This one is covered in rocks. And I've questioned before, um, what is the purpose of the rocks? Like when people come, are they placing the rocks like once a year? Is it every single visit? Is it every member of the family or anyone who comes to visit? Um, what's, the, what's the deal there? How's that work? <laughs> There's an ambulance going off in the background, if y'all hear anything. The doctor says his friends and admirers. We see that a lot in minority cemeteries when a headstone is given to someone like a memorial stone or that kind of thing maybe it's not the official headstone but they'll be like the friends of such and such or co-workers of such and such so that you know who dedicated that stone to the people well, this is interesting this is all one giant thing and above we have the french flag flying Oh, the smell up here it smells like balloons. You know that kind of rubbery balloon smell? Weird. It's really strong. <laughs> okay. Um, but all of these seem to be connected. There's a giant one here. It says, The Ville of Gentilly. The memory of those whose tombs uh, they died for France. And the... Uh, what is the suave guard for their liberty? Let me see if I can translate this because it seems interesting. Let's see, I've kind of given up on French. Like as soon as we took our French exam, my brain was like, excellent, no more French needed. <laughs> Even in class, I'm like, I don't know what the teacher's talking about. Okay, it says, in memory of those who've fallen for France and the safeguarding of our freedoms, 1914 to 1918. So I guess these are like military burials. Like the War of 1918, maybe? I don't know. 1912, I don't know what's going on. So it might be interesting to research the history of the area see another one back here it's got one of those conservation signs on it and it looks like it needs it this is the first cemetery i've been in where i've seen signs that appear to be pointing out headstones and burials that are being taken care of that need to be kept safe um there's this guy here like this building it's interesting placement is the 22nd Division Allée de Fortification. So we've got the French flag and then this monument. I don't know if there's some significance to all of this being like right here together. And it's near the back of the cemetery at this point. It's kind of where we are. And my rain clouds are coming back. back of that building a little trash can that flipped over Let's see a butterfly this is cool looking Let me get a little closer so we can see what's going on I don't know what's going on at the top part it's just sort of unfinished and then this looks like a strand of ivy or something but it's got like berries on it 
Holly? I'm not sure. And then of course you've got the image of the guy and some other imagery. L-S-H-D. I don't even know if I'm saying those letters in order because the some are larger than the others. I don't know if you can see that there. It's kind of hard to see because we don't have the sun right now, so it's not giving, like, casting shadows on some of the letters. Uh, looks like another person who fought for justice, humanity, and I can't read that last word. The infant of the... Isle of France? What an odd thing to say. <laughs> Maybe I'm misunderstanding. I don't know. Going across here. This caught my eye as soon as I turned around. What in the world? what happened with that one. All right, let's keep it moving. That's cool. All right, I think right here I'm going to stop for a second just to end this part of the footage and start anew. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Noticing this odd thing, it's like a, a tank coming out of the wall and on the end of the tank is a picture of this guy. I don't know. Let me see if I can get a better view from over here. <laughs> I cannot tell what is happening here. Look at that. Trying to see. Oh, it's so strange. There's no information here to tell me anything about who this person was, um, other than the family name and the tank. Now, point out again the name uh, right there. It's on almost all of these stones. Nearly every single one has that name on it. Wow, look at that. And something right here where I'm at smells wonderful. It's always nice to be in a cemetery and not have it smell terrible. Interesting use of the different stones, the gray granite and the red. I don't know what color that is. Orange, red. <laughs> Here's another old one. Oh, look at this. Prime example of what happens to the pins. That guy has cut all the way through the stone. Um, basically what happens is these things start to rust you have a freeze-thaw cycle that happens. Um, when things get cold, they compress, get really tight together, and then when they get hot, they expand. And that kind of compression and exp expansion creates cracks in the stone that allow more water to get in, which creates more rust, <laughs> which you know just adds to the process. And eventually the stone just completely cracks. And it's usually right around where those metal pins are. Um, yeah, and if you don't fix it as soon as you see it, it will destroy those corners, left and right corners at the bottom of the stone. Um, this one, we've even got some structural cracks happening here, probably because the weight of the stone is no longer being supported. Um, you know, the, the base is broken. There's no support for the weight above. And so you start to get these cracks in the center 
Um, this guy should be taken down ASAP. It's actually dangerous and I shouldn't be standing this close to it. So I'm going to step down. <laughs> I need to start making my way to the other side of the cemetery. So much cool stuff out here though. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Just gorgeous. I'm enjoying so much just looking at the cemeteries, viewing the headstones. Um, you know, the first cemetery is exciting because I've never seen any of the stuff that's in the cemetery. And then it starts to become less exciting and less exciting as things repeat. <laughs> um, and even the damages that we see, the damage repeats. And so it's nice. That's kind of why you see me walking towards um, these unusual stones and monuments, because I want to see something different. This ground, it's like a grid pattern of grass. Oh, I see. There's like this... Uh, I don't know what this is but they probably laid down something that has grass seed on it <sighs> I don't know what's happening <laughs> I'm so confused see I don't work I've never worked in the side of cemeteries where burials happen um, of course I'm familiar with the process I've seen it I've experienced it having to you know, later rest several family members and things, but I don't understand like what is happening here. You know, um, I have questions about this kind of stuff. Oh, this person is loved. My goodness. A beautiful bush down here. And what looks like a kind of spruce or evergreen type tree. Lots of the burials in this section have this sort of cloth over top of them. I have no idea what that's about. Um, maybe this is like a area, like a newer area with more recent burials. Maybe they've done some work on these sections. I don't know. I literally have zero answers for what's happening. Uh, if you know, leave me a message in the comments. Let me know. Help me. Teach me something because <laughs> I am confused. Fully confused. Mm, I don't know what's happening here. There's even like, if you can see stones and stuff inside there that are broken up. I don't know. Lots of question marks. <laughs> Trying to walk through here, but honestly, the ground's got me nervous. I don't know what's going on. Kind of cutting through. I'm going to zigzag for a second as I see things that are pulling my attention here and there. It's a section of the cemetery we haven't walked in yet. But I just wanted to show everybody this beauty that stands before us. Oh, I can't even get it in the camera. It's so grand. That is great. Let me see if I can get a better picture with my phone. So I can actually zoom out more with my phone. Yeah, there we go. So what I will do is when I go back over the video, I'll add this structure like the picture of it so you can see it because it's very pretty I see more monuments that are under conservation here or signs all right let's continue ah, let me check the time I do have to go somewhere tonight with my study abroad group or just wanted to stay on track here. And you know, a lot of the things I could show you, they just sort of repeat, right? It's the same stuff 
over and over again, the same kind of damage, the same kind of stones, um, that kind of thing. So I just want to maximize my time in these cemeteries and try to find the different things now as I go along. Of course, we're walking through. Of course, we're looking. We're enjoying, you know, the cemeteries and the natural ambiance. But I'm also looking for that interesting thing that pulls my attention, like this one. Look at that. Cool little window on the side. And these, I don't know if it was cracked, looks like there's some tape in there. That's a cool little structure there. Sometimes I think, like, if I was going to be buried, would I want, like, a little house <laughs> or a giant monument or anything like that? I don't know. Hard to say. For now, I think I just want to uh, be cremated. That's what I'm going with. And you can see the stadium up there. I don't know what they use that stadium for or if they use it, but I imagine if they do, it's probably pretty loud over here in the cemetery. Wow, look at the damage to the sidewalk area. And that goes all the way down. That is not good. I'm glad that I took this trip. Um, you know, the first couple of weeks, I was like really regretting this. Um, not because of the cemeteries, but because of the daily life and the, oh, the struggle to learn French. Y'all, this struggle is real. I don't know what it is, but like Latin-based languages and me, we do not get along. I struggle with Spanish. I struggle with French. Um, English is not a problem because, I mean, it's my language. And also English comes from like all languages, not just like our Latin base. But yeah, I've had major regrets on this trip, but you know, I passed my class. That's all that matters. And I learned a lot. I stuck through something that was very difficult for me to stick through. And I'm proud of myself for that. But you know, I really wish during the first week or two I had immediately jumped into the cemeteries because I love them so much and they bring me so much comfort and joy. <laughs> They're so peaceful and um, yeah, I just think it would have helped me to adjust better to like go for a walk in a cemetery. I didn't think about it until week two, um, which was like my second or third day of classes, something like that. Y'all can check my blog and see when that was, because I'm pretty sure I put it in there. But yeah, just, I wish I started a little bit sooner. It is significantly cooler back here, like cold. I almost feel like I need a coat. And there's somebody coming up behind me as well. <clears throat> just gonna mosey on around because I haven't really seen anybody out here and it, it makes me uncomfortable when I haven't seen anybody and then suddenly somebody pops up so just gonna keep my distance <laughs> this whole huge cemetery why would you be walking where I'm walking you know
but it does look like some of these are 2000 burials so they could be more recent oh more bathrooms how nice is that to have bathrooms in the front and the back of the cemetery what a thought i like that there's a place to sit out of the rain again Oh, this is another gate. That's why it's a second entrance. And there's information on the sign here. I'm gonna go check this out. Just wonder if it's the same information. Oh, so I could get out through there if I wanted to. <laughs> no doggies. <laughs> hmm. Okay, nothing too different from what we already saw. Oh, but the sky is getting dark. It definitely is. There's these trees again with these things on them that I saw in other cemeteries. I don't know what they are. They look like bushes I used to have in my house when I was a kid, but yeah, I don't know. There's another cool one. This one has stained glass. Some more recent burials, 91 and 94. I bet that's beautiful too when the sunlight shines through it. I recently learned there's a pet cemetery. So I have put the pet cemetery <laughs> on my list of places to visit. Just out of curiosity, you know? Look at this. Such a grand structure, it's quite unusual. Get it from another angle. I've lost sight of the person that was back here. Just want to stay aware. And it's always important, you know, when you go to cemeteries anywhere, they can often be like secluded places. Okay, he's back by the bathroom. And if you're like me, you're first a female <laughs> and uh, you visit cemeteries alone, which can sometimes not be safe. Well, most of the time people are innocent. They're visiting their own family members. And they too maybe enjoy walking in cemeteries. They're probably not looking for any trouble, but you never know. You never know. Um, I'm a lover of true crime. <laughs> I'm always like listening to these kind of podcasts and watching TV shows. So as my favorite podcast says, you got to keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> you just never know. Look at that, the doggone stadium lights <laughs> in the background. Ugh. All right. Our sky grows darker, the air grows cooler. It's becoming quite ominous and foreboding out here with strangers and rain and... <laughs> Yeah, I'm having fun with it, but I'm also serious about it too. You know, if you visit cemeteries, especially if you go alone, be safe, keep a weapon on you, some way to incapacitate someone, you know, have your phone so you can call for help. And it's not just people you have to be concerned about. Now, I don't know about French cemeteries, but you know, in some American cemeteries, you have to worry about snakes that we have poisonous snakes. I don't have to worry about spider bites or, hey, you could be walking along and not see a hole and 
break your ankle, you know, stepping in the hole wrong. I knew a volunteer once who broke his ankle um, walking in a cemetery. So you just never know. There's so much that could go wrong and you have to be careful. You really do. Now you can see here the traffic. I don't know if you can hear that traffic, but I can. <laughs> And I have lost sight of this guy again. I don't know how it keeps happening. He's wearing like bright neon orange. Like, I don't know, but maybe he went into the bathroom. Just want to be aware. I'm going to cut through here. I think, ouch. Keep forgetting that my knee got injured yesterday. cut across here and see what there is to see going closer to the road but I'm also making my way up to the front if possible I'm going to try and visit another cemetery today um, my camera is just about out of juice so I do have a charger but it doesn't take long enough to get to the cemetery to like charge it so if I do another cemetery I'll use my cell phone sorry y'all I know. There's a bee hanging out around the stone of all things, not even a flower. This area feels a lot more like overgrown. Like I almost feel like I'm at home. <laughs> like, you know, it's a cemetery that occasionally somebody cuts the grass and then come like the end of July, the beginning of August, they just stop cutting because they think the grass stops growing because we're getting close to like fall. And I'm like, no, it grows clear through November in Virginia. <laughs> but uh, yeah, some very overgrown areas. And just the way the, the ground is kind of broken up, like an old asphalt kind of playground or something. It's all giving me home vibes. <laughs> It's definitely more on par with what I might see at a cemetery back home that has care, but maybe not like the amount of care that it needs. Sometimes I wish I could bring a bicycle and just pedal through these places, but they have signs that say no bikes. So even if I had one, I wouldn't be able to use it. And these are all the burials along the gate. I want to point out the debris on top of the gate. It's just all kinds of stuff sitting up there. I don't know if it's purposely placed there, uh, if somebody's house is over there, if there's like a work shed or something over there. I hear a dog. And also along the wall, there are these hooks. I don't know what those are for, if they're for flowers, if it's for directing the growth of say like ivy or something. I'm not sure about that. And all of the headstones, oh, what a rancid smell that just came my way. Oh, wow, y'all. We need smell-o-vision right now. Oh, that is disgusting. Oh. It smells like sewage. Oh, I was noticing this um, black sign here. It's actually on an old stone. Um, and if you can see kind of back between these, there's another one. I'm seeing that a lot on these older stones, like maybe they replaced the stone with like the original sign on the stone or whatever with these newer things. But I'm confused because it looks like they're using metal to like screw them in, which could be bad. Could be very bad, depending. 
The burials here seem to be on like a really nice grid pattern. Um, but the ones on the other side of that hedge there were not, they kind of followed the shape of the cemetery, which is interesting. I think I'm just in like a different area altogether. Same cemetery, but like the sections are very noticeably different. I mean, for one, you have all these individual burials down the side of the road. Nice open grass field. Um, not sure what these are. Do they mark burials or something else? These clearly do, but I think, I don't know if those are like waiting for burials, if they've already been buried. Um, are these for cremains, maybe? Because they're much smaller? Just look at that. You've got three names in this one little spot. So maybe these are for cremains. If so, they're so cute and they take up so less space, so much less space compared to our friends over here. Um, so that's kind of cool. Actually, I've seen some interesting things over there too. Well, they're up here, so we'll just continue going straight. Yeah, these are so much smaller and just very cute and neat. Maybe these are spaces that are waiting for people. If so, this could be like some kind of memorial space for cremains that they've just set aside and they haven't like done anything yet with the space to mark it out. There's my crow buddy. Every cemetery there's a crow. <laughs> Never fails. It's getting so dark out here that it almost feels like it's becoming nighttime, which I know is not possible because it's 2.20 and it doesn't turn nighttime until late. Okay, this is Garden of Memories. Those are definitely like names of people, births and deaths. 2007, 2015. 1984 and looks like these have spaces for more A little rock garden ah oh, even somebody up on the wall and more spaces that's cute that's really nice let me grab a picture of it with my phone still keep an eye out for people I have not seen that guy anymore, so I don't know what's up with that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Just grabbing some photos of this section over here. It's definitely starting to rain, which is okay because we're right at the entrance. I'm almost done, so that's great that it held off so long. Yeah, these are definitely for cremains. Oh shoot, these are big raindrops. Somebody left a jacket and some cigarettes or something. I'm not sure what that is, actually soap? Odd. These are so neat. It's different. Oh, it is like pouring down all of a sudden. All right, I'm gonna have to stop the video and see if I can get my umbrella out because this is like heavy rain. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> okay, we're back. I got my umbrella out. The rain is like hardcore, like just all of a sudden out of nowhere. Let me see if I can switch hands here. Ugh. Okay, and my device, the battery is about to die, so. Everything's just sort of happening all at once. <laughs> I'm so glad I brought my umbrella with me today though. Yay, because this I was not expecting this kind of rain. Yesterday it rained, then I was on a tour and it was like off and on rain. Like it would rain a little and then stop or whatever and it was fine. Um, pull out the umbrella for a second and then you could put it away. But it didn't rain like this. What does that say? 
I don't know what this means. Concessionaire de cette sepulture est prix de se présenter d'urgence au bureau de la conservation. Concession expiré. I don't know what that means. There are on a lot of these out here. I guess, ow, something just got me in my foot. Ow, what in the world? Oof. Yo, that's why we need to cut our grass. <laughs> but yeah, look at that, there's another one. So there's so many out here that are just damaged. It's awful. Okay, and just like that, I think the rain has stopped. <laughs> I'm just going to keep my umbrella up anyway because it's here now and I'm almost done. So let's see if I can walk through here. Just trying to find places that aren't under conservation and about to fall apart. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, we already walked on there. Oh, check that out. Big chunk of that building is missing. And up at the top, you can actually see some metal up there. I think that these things might be because of the metal pins that are holding them together. Huh, interesting. Oh, but check out the cross inside. Oh, can't get a good angle. Oh, shoot. I might try. Let me see if I can try with my phone to get. A better angle the sunlight is like hitting it just right all my electronics got soaked while I was trying to pull out <laughs> my dog on umbrella let's see yeah there we go okay sometimes my phone just takes better pictures than this camera can do when I'm recording ah <sighs> okay we are heading out, y'all. This has been fun. It has been real, but I don't think it's been real fun because <laughs> it is rain and creepy creepers in the cemetery. <laughs> I need to stop. It's probably just a normal person. I'm just being too overly cautious. Oh my, look at this. How beautiful is that? It's like a panel of glass behind her. That's why it has that sort of bluish color. That's cool. That's different. The Bill of Gentilly, a son, bien futur. A son bien futur. Keep forgetting that's not English, that's French. <laughs> More damage. Ugh, so sad. Wow. Look at that. I guess this tells about this person. Died for France. Always they have died for France. Time passes, your memory rests. Your brother, your brother regrets from your colleague. Hmm. Okay. I think our rain is letting up again. If y'all hear any odd swishing sound, my book bag is now off balance because I took my umbrella out. So it's kind of moving weird on my back. I don't know what that is. It's an entryway into somewhere that I'm not going to go. Look, they've spray painted the door silver. I saw this done in some cemeteries in... Um, like the western part, is it western? No, the eastern part of Virginia. 
um, some of the black cemeteries, they had these kind of burial, like the actual burial vault was above ground, like partially raised up above ground. And um, they would spray paint the tops of them silver. And I don't really know why, like I don't understand that tradition. I, I'm going to use the word tradition. I don't know if that's, you know, what it's called. Huh. That's interesting. Little, what is that? Shale or slate? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure about why they do that. Um, it doesn't really protect them from anything. It's just spray paint, you know? Um, it doesn't look nice. And if you spray paint them all, it's not like you make one stand out more so than the other. So I don't know. It's got a picture of a little girl on it. All right, let's continue to head to the front. I see somebody just came in through that automatic gate they have up front. So somebody's vehicle is being allowed out here. Ouch, the ground is crumbling under my feet. Look at this. That's cool. So the cross sort of, you know, looks like wood, but it's not. And I don't know what's going on here. It's like pockmarked, like, <laughs> I don't know, some kind of brain coral or something. I'm not sure what that artistic choice is, like what it's called. Hmm. Oh my goodness, look how many people are buried here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two of them named Paul. <laughs> two Pauls, two Pierres. Must be a popular family name. Oh, that's a beautiful cross. Check that out. With the wreath at the bottom. Very cool. 1902 and 1904 here, looking very old. It's the same stone we normally see for these older burials. Different shape, but same type of stone. Ugh, I'm tripping over this road. It's raised up in a way that is making me kind of trip over it. It needs to be smoothed out or something. I'll walk over here real quickly. Now we're walking on pebbles. <laughs> oh goodness. Probably can put my umbrella down, but I'm not positive. These are new. Look at that. That's beautiful. And one with just a cross, a wooden cross marking the burial, which is something we don't see a lot. At least I haven't seen a lot in French cemeteries. But that's the first one I've seen. I'm sure that's temporary because this looks fairly new. It's literally got somebody's footprints in it. So they just, you know, kind of stomp that down probably. This is a mess. This is what happens when you plant stuff and then don't like come back to take care of it. You have to take care of it. All right, my phone or my camera is giving me the red battery warning, so I might have to finish this up on my phone. We'll see. I'll take it till it dies. <laughs> uh, I need to go around to get out of here, I think. There's a lot of traffic in here all of a sudden.
kind of odd structure over there. I don't know if it's just piles of dirt or what. Maybe that's where they store the dirt for their burials. buildings along the wall. All right, y'all. So my camera officially died. Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I've got it charging in my bag now. Um, so it is what it is. But you can see. Yeah. yeah. Right near the entrance of the cemetery. Um, we're going to be leaving in just a second i kind of wanted to just shoot an outro just so you weren't left kind of like what just happened <laughs> look at that oh my goodness it's kind of rough i am trying to like navigate this camera backwards not happening well um but it's okay you don't get to see me a whole lot when i walk through the cemetery it's like you see me before and after and that's pretty much it and then you just hear my asmr voice <laughs> for the rest of the time so that's all right could be worse huh i could have like a super annoying like whiny voice or something uh, but that is it that is the cemetery we have visited everything uh we did a pretty awesome walkthrough at the cemetery i think i hit just about every major area it's not bad um, I'm here long enough for my camera to die, so I think I did a great job. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the walk. Um, yeah, uh, I may, if possible, shoot another video today. I gotta let my devices charge a little bit, and I'm not sure what this rain is gonna do, so we'll have to see about the rain. But thanks for visiting the. If I can get it in the frame. Oh, <laughs> the Gentilly Cemetery with me. Uh, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed the walk and seeing something different. Again, if you have any answers to the questions that I posed in this video, please put them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Support me so I can continue to visit cemeteries because it's something I enjoy doing. All right. Thanks. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.